uh, don't kill your friends or your boyfriends or whoever. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Gallup, Pam, it's Rachel. And Rhea. And also the Motley Crew King! And we're the Gala sisters. We're actually Irish twins. Yeah, <clears throat> which means we're 15 months apart or less. Oh my god, we <laughs> have a um, very bizarre, interesting video for you today. <laughs> wow! But before we get started, please make sure you are following us on the social media scrolling below. As well as linked in the description box down below where you will also find his channel. Yeah, buddy! And we also built our own website where we have three different blogs or bios and an online store at www.thegalsisters.com. And if you'd like to stay involved and informed for free, then click that big old subscribe button. And with that, we'll, we'll take a look at the giggling murderer, Shay Groves. <laughs> Ew, the tattooed mama rapper, bitch! Okay, so in July of last year, 2022, Shay Groves murdered her boyfriend. Oh my! She brutally stabbed him 22 times, and it's just nasty. I mean, it's, it's just gross. It's literally graphic. Were they trying to pull something from Forensic Files where they're trying to spray lumen all, all over the place? Is it was better? She was a fucking creep. Yes! She kept pictures of Jeffrey Dahmer. And also Ted Bundy. Right? That's really, and, really weird. And many other serial killers up in frames in her home. She worshipped the ground they walked on. She obsessively watched true crime and studied how to get away with the crime herself. But she was too stupid and didn't realize that she was going to get caught in the end. How did it work for you, dumbass? Not well, huh? She had a knife on her nightstand. She carried a knife in her boot. I think this woman was a little, um, lacking, oh, oh. was a little lacking in the brains department. <laughs> yes, she was very deranged. And she, yes, has been convicted of murder, a murder, so we can say that she is indeed a murderer. However, she is set to receive her sentencing on February 22nd, 2023, here in the next couple days. So it'll be interesting. Do you think that she will get life in prison? I certainly yes. hope so. She also belongs in a damn psych ward as well. She needs to be locked up in that as well. She belongs in a loony bin. Boop, go, 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 go. Drugged up on all kinds of meds and doing that... <sighs> As well. So, one might ask, what prompted her to brutally murder her boyfriend? Besides the fact that she was obsessed with death and murders and obviously wanted to be a serial killer herself, why did she do it? Well, what prompted her to do it? She was obsessed with BDSM, being a dominate, dominatrix, being um, forcibly uh, penetrated to wake up. She had a contract with her boyfriend about that. Yes, but, <laughs> but what really triggered her crime of passion as a prosecutor said is that he was chatting with a minor on Facebook and it flew her into a fit of rage and she decided to murder him because she did not like that he was chatting with a minor. Allegedly. Allegedly. What if she was doing it under his name? Yeah. We don't know that she was not We do know. Do, is she standing right here? Excuse me. No, she's not here. No. Okay, but, you know, boyfriends and girlfriends and best friends know passwords and, you know, Rachel yes! and I share some of our social media. Yes, we do. And sometimes even he uses it. Very rarely, though. Hold on. Very rarely. But we also do have a shared account for the three of us as well. That's right. We do, actually. So, yes, her gratuitous sex life really came in to play during this trial because she was obsessed with some pretty freaky shit. And being that we're asexuals, it's really interesting to look at this because, first of all, A, I'm not into anything like that even close. I mean, I don't even like to be touched, really. So hearing her obsession with juggling two guys at the same time, oh. with the thrill of them catching each other, woo, and her friend came in and said that this was all true. And 
after she murdered this guy, Frankie, she bragged about it. She giggled about it. She showed off the dead body. She was like, yes, I finally did it. Ha, ha, ha. Pat on the back for me. And she showed her friend and she came up with an alibi. Obviously, it didn't really stick because she didn't know what she was doing. <laughs> Despite man. the fact that she had been studying serial killers. I mean, do we study serial killers, Rachel? Yes. Yes, yes we, we do. do. But we don't be like, well, this is how we're going to get away with murdering. Blah, 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 blah. We do not go out of our way to try to say, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, because that's the how we roll. No. Even though we are kind of clinically insane, that's besides the point. <laughs> so she also went into so far as to accuse, falsely accuse her boyfriends and ex-boyfriends of Me Too allegations, fake Me Too allegations, that they were actually able to prove they were fake. So it's really relevant to this. She would film them having intercourse and then she oh would my. doctor the videos to make it look like she was being slaped. And then she would say, well, I'm going to put this all over Facebook and I'm going to show everybody that you attacked me and that this was non-consensual, but when you go and you look at the undoctored tapes, which of course the court did, you find that of course it was all consensual and her little cries of, I had to murder him in self-defense, I'm completely innocent, oh lordy loo, were completely fake. She sounds like a weirdo. She sounds like a, oh, uh, what is she trying to be like Post Malone with them ugly ass tats on her face? <laughs> you don't know who I'm talking about. <laughs> He is one of the worst rappers I've ever heard of in my life. He has done some work with Tommy Lee, Ozzy Osbourne, and Duff McKagan, the bass player of Guns N' Roses. And he pretty much wrote a third of Ozzy's album. Wish there were some awesome tracks on there as well, too. Under the Graveyard, Eat Me, and a bunch of other ones. This is just one of those stories that is so weird that it's yes. even true, let alone when we're ta or you're talking about it. It's just... <laughs> lady, you have to um, be more careful, I guess. Uh, don't kill your friends or your boyfriends or whoever. Yeah, seriously. Like, why would you try to go out of your way and whack off your boyfriend like that? Well, was she trying to be like Courtney Clenny in a way? This happened before Courtney Clenny. I don't care. Still, <laughs> I don't give a shit. Maybe Courtney care. Clenny was trying to be like Shay. <laughs> yeah. And the vice versa, actually. These people are very weird. and People kill people for the weirdest stuff. I'm going to tell a quick story. When I was a little kid, I'll strike that. I was a teenager. I went to the same high school that Emma goes to. I also went to the same middle school that Emma went to as well. Now, my other sister, not Rachel, the other unseen gala sister, who we're not going to ever name on this channel, and if you know her name, please don't comment that down below. She has requested this was having a band concert. Now in those days, the gala sister played the clarinet. And I came across this dollar, and she did not, I swear this really happened, that we had to give to the boosters, which were the people who um, supplied the band with instruments and other, among other things, if you didn't have one. Well, I came across this dollar that said, such and such was killed for one dollar and his pager. Yeah. People will kill people for stupid reasons. Huh? It was like a stamp on the dollar bill. It was the weirdest thing, and I'll never forget it. Yeah. What the fuck? Yes. And <gasps> that's... Do you, you remember that? Yeah, I do remember that. It's interesting to bring that oh up, God. too, that people will kill over, like, literally almost anything. If you watch these true crime shows, you see that they'll kill over $1,000, 100 bucks, and it's really not a lot of money in the grand scheme right. of things. It's not worth it. But when you don't have it, it does seem like a lot of money. Now, yes. one of the things we've been talking about with him a lot recently is that what you put into your mind comes out. Yes. So if you're putting in a bunch of blood and gore and violence and violent sex and that's like all you're putting in that's what's going to come out in your personality and in your loves and your interests and how you interact with people so you have to have a good balance of everything like you can there's nothing wrong with watching true crime no 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 no. but no. maybe go listen to like a little bit of like wendy rule on the side or watch i don't know like cuomo on um news nation or something yes like that. but you have to or listen to some wrestling podcasts while you're at it you or do some yoga to yes. be careful 
Yes! People get killed over the stupidest shit. They don't understand. People don't understand that, like, well, I'm going to kill you for this or for that or for that. Or for that. Why kill someone? What? what Who you, the hell really cares? What are you trying to prove? Yes. And also, I want to touch more on that point what Rachel was talking about. So, many, many years ago when I was just a boy and whatnot, I used to stay up really, really late watching a show called Forensic Files. Now, a lot of these morons' problems were they had like fifty, five hundred thousand dollars life insurance policies on their significant other, and I was telling my mom and my dad were saying that to each other. I was saying that to my dad, my mom and I, myself, or my dad were saying that, and we're like, "How brain dead are these people? They think they they can just do these convoluted plans. It's not that smart." You look like an idiot by the end of the day, and there's a blood st- blood spatter all over the place, especially in Dexter too. It's just you have to understand that if you're going to do these things, like Joe Kenda always says, we've talked about Joe Kenda before. If you commit a crime, if you commit a crime, I will find you. Yes, this is a very perfect Joe Kenda thing. <clears throat> uh, if anybody knows how to get a hold of Joe Kenda, please uh, let us know. So let's talk a little bit about what she looks like. This chick's look and oh god remember we hail from uptown minneapolis you know land of tattoos and piercings i mean just look at us i have green hair purple she has hair. purple hair he's wearing a shit ton of makeup too we all are i hate her look she so looks, do i she looks like a um a racer head a, a, a crazy person <laughs> She looks like what I would define as crazy. She looks like somebody that would step off the cast of Empire. Seriously. She looks stupid. She looks too stupid. I'm not saying that face tattoos are always horrible. Because I know that there are some cultures where face tattoos are extremely important to their beliefs. And I respect that. And they can be done tastefully. But hers, it just looks trashy. It looks gross. It looks like the one that Mike Tyson has on his face. And yeah, I'm not a huge ass. fan of that one. Yeah, me either. He looks like a, he looks like a dumbass. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it either. <laughs> There's a time and a place for tattoos. I yes. am not against tattoos. In fact, if I had my way, I'd have two sleeves. But I don't have the money or my way right now. Even a face tattoo isn't necessarily bad. Oh, oh, we will oh, find oh, our oh, way to get the it. shirt tattoo that we talked about before. <laughs> I remember that story. <laughs> Rach, would you like to tell the short tattoo story again? So, <laughs> back in the day, Rhea and I are in our late 30s. I'm 37. She's 38. We used to go to Lollapalooza, which is in Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> and we loved going to that music festival. Thank you, Perry Farrell. It's amazing. But it's very interesting to look at the people <laughs> over there. And one of the most unique things we saw was this guy walking around without a shirt on. Oh, wait. I think he was wearing a shirt. Or maybe he wasn't. Because he was wearing a tattoo of a shirt. Like, it was like a full-on, like, blue dress shirt with a red tie and, like, buttons. What the fuck? I'll never forget it. I remember we discovered it and you and I could not stop laughing. And there's a picture of my sister and I underneath an umbrella, sopping wet in the rain that some guy took. And I would just... I hope he finds our YouTube channel and sends it to us. Because I want to see... Please, that would be great. I want to see that picture so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but just the stories of the weird tattoos that I could tell you. I could tell you weird tattoo story. I mean, I have no problem with tattoos. In fact, yeah, I mean, me neither. If they're done tastefully, they're fine. But you overdo it with the tattoos and the piercings, and you got a million piercings in your face. You look a little bit just too stupid. Yeah. I maybe? I don't really know. Odd? Strange? It looks clunky. It doesn't look classy. It looks and... tacky is what it is. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't either. Well, perfect example. When I was scrolling the internet a long time ago, there was this guy who had a million piercings. I swear to God. Here, 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 everywhere. And even his fucking eyebrows. Now, the thing with tattoos, some guys who have kick-ass tattoos, a set of tattoos on both arms and their necks, like The Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, Corey Graves, yep. Corey Graves Brock Lesnar, Yes, their tattoos are cool. Uh, Car- Carrie Cross. Um, Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley. Uh, Try and think of some other ones. I think we all get the point. Yeah, you get the point. Tommy Lee, Nikki Six, Mick Mars, Machine Gun Kelly. You get the idea. Yes. Yes. But there's a time and a place for tattoos. When yes, you have there's... so many of them, you look crazy. Like, there's that guy that was in Rupert's Believe It or Not that wants to be a lizard, and he has his entire skin tattooed green, and he has a look at I heard about that. Oh, no, and the forked tongue. 
Yeah, we saw that when we were in Wisconsin Dells about maybe 14, 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. And we're just like, what the fuck? Like, that's taking it too far. Yeah. I got a quick story to tell. So when I was just a boy, way back years ago when I went to go up to St. Uh, in, uh, in Augustine, there was a restaurant that we actually ate at that was not that far from Ripley's, believe, believe it or not. And you know who actually read those when I was a kid? Huh. Me! There's I a, read every issue. Yeah, there's a Ripley's, believe it or not, museum in Wisconsin Dells, too. Yeah. Yes! Yeah. I believe there's one in Florida. I'm not sure there is. Okay, so this is just... The kind of thing, like, murderers can... But we're talking a little bit about murderers. Murderers can look like anyone. Murderers yes. can be the housewife from the suburban from the suburban school district. They can be the crazy guy who is upset with his children. They can be anybody, anyone, anything, anywhere, yes. anytime, any place. Yeah. Murderers are not just simply cra- people who look like us. No. Right. Just and because someone looks like a stereotypical, what you would think a murderer would look like, like this chick, like Shay, doesn't necessarily mean that they are. No. They can have a couple screws loose and have, kind of have a uh, couple of fries short of a happy meal and a couple of fingers short of a uh, full set. Or a couple of nuts shy of a fruitcake. Or a couple of um, wires short of a full uh, set board. Actually, I argue that you should be really wary of the ones that seem like they're perfect with their bleach blonde hair, their perfect little oh, like the Karen outfit. Like the Karen, <laughs> they get the airhead ones. Perfectly done makeup without too much makeup, not overdoing it, but not underdoing it. You know, and they never swear. Can I see your manager, perfect, please? They're perfect little goody two shoes. Is that the ones that always had the Baba T or whatever? The ones that explode a little bit and let out the wild a little bit are the ones that you don't need to worry about. <laughs> like us. So, this is just one of the many murder stories, and since we don't have much to talk about, we're going to talk more about true crime now. I think this channel is evolving, it's changing, and that's okay. We're, we really, you know, are harping that we're not going anywhere. We will never go anywhere, and no. anyone who we've ever defended is never going to have another a video made against that person. No. No, absolutely not. And anybody not. who said we were going to do that is just full of crap. We also do not condone violence of any kind unless it absolutely is self-defense. Yes. So we are going to end the video here as always. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for listening. If you guys like this video, please make sure to give that big thumbs up a click. Smash that subscribe button down below. Let's kind of get the channel going now that views are going up. The subscriber count is not changing as much as we need it to. No. Let's get it going. Watch the video at the end. Watch it, watch it, watch it, because you may learn something, even if you've already seen it. Give that bell a big ring to indicate that you want to be updated whenever we post videos or go live. Generally, we post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday at 11 a.m. Central, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As of now, Sunday Night Lives are postponed until we decide how we're going to make them moving forward. We also have a second channel entitled Adventure with the Gala Fam. Over there, you'll really heavily see the Gala Daughter uh, featured. She really wanted a YouTube channel. She did not be quiet about it for years. And finally, <clears throat> she got her wish. We also have a podcast that goes out sometimes on Tuesdays entitled Gala with the Gala Sisters, which is a podcast on movies and TV. That'll also now be featuring heavily MCK since he lives with us. Good luck ever trying to get him to not live with us. That's not your place. That's ours. <laughs> of course, the Gala sisters also have a second podcast because, you know, one is just not enough. I mean, you got to have more than one, right? Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you Mr. and Ms. Crazy Wrestling Family, hosted by... The Motley Crew King, the DMC Figures World Heavyweight Champion. Because why? DMC, go get it to you, bitch. What's up, Barney? And also, cannot wait for the next episode to take place. Woo! Cannot wait. That podcast goes out the Thursday before a professional wrestling pay-per-view. All this information is in the description box below where you should be checking out. We also built our own um, merch that you should <clears> check <throat> out. We do everything ourselves. Yes, all the editing, literally everything ourselves. We're actually really smart, despite what some people might think, you stupid idiots. And if you want to donate to our channel, you can buy us a coffee or donate through PayPal. If you want, please do not feel obligated to do so. Don't go broke doing it. We definitely don't want you to do that. And thank you to everyone who has stuck around. Please double check and make sure that you're subscribed because I know YouTube is having some issues with that. So you gotta make sure you're checking that because we really need to keep those numbers up. And 
we love you guys so much and we're also really happy that he's here. We feel safer and we've had some incidents recently that we were really glad we had a guy with us. So yeah, thank you so much. We'll talk to you again soon. Love and share. Bye! Bye!